Hello everyone out there, how are you doing? This is Rob of Rule of Two Review. Welcome back to the channel where today I want to talk about Metroid Dread and the Nintendo Switch OLED, which, as most of us know, very conveniently launch on the same day later this year on October 8th. And I wanted to go into and dissect the idea of if the Switch OLED could potentially help or hurt the sales of Metroid Dread. Now, obviously, these are two huge topics and two huge products that we're kind of mashing together in this video and this conversation, right? Metroid Dread, of course, Metroid 5. You guys know, you know me, you've been following me. This is like the biggest deal in the world for myself as a super huge Metroid fan. The biggest release in gaming for myself in like the last 10 or so years. Crazy exciting. The world is very excited. I mean, I've discussed it with you guys. Everyone is paying attention to the Metroid franchise like crazy for the first time in well over a decade. So Metroid Dread represents a very huge release. Then of course, boy oh boy, we have the Nintendo Switch OLED, a pretty divisive product and a pretty divisive topic. You guys know I've made two videos on that and discussed my thoughts all around and I've spent plenty of time on camera kind of discussing my own personal thoughts and also dissecting everyone's kind of reactions to the Switch OLED. But like I've been saying here in this intro, the fact that these two products release on the same day, on October 8th, and even the fact that the reveal trailer for the Switch OLED heavily featured Metroid Dread and even began the reveal with Metroid Dread seems to show that Nintendo likes the idea of marrying these two products together on their release day, featuring them as complementing one another, which is certainly very cool, especially as a Metroid fan, it feels like Nintendo showing the world that they really care about the Metroid franchise again. So from that perspective, it's a very good thing. But I also want to go into the sales aspect of Metroid Dread, because as Metroid fans, we're all very focused on how successful we want Metroid Dread to be, because it's going to bode well for the franchise. And the Switch OLED really could be, I think, something that could either help or hurt those sales. And that's what I find interesting, and I have a couple of ideas that I want to discuss with you guys. As always, before we jump into the Metroid and Switch OLED topic, I like to remind you guys I'm always trying to grow the channel here on Rule of Two Review. I upload several videos every single week, and I live stream around once a week. I cover all things Nintendo, I discuss every single little thing about Metroid possible, and I cover all things gaming. So as you watch this video, if you seem to like what I'm doing and what you hear, then I hope you will consider subscribing to the channel. So right now, I think most people are focused on the idea of the Switch OLED only being a good thing for Metroid Dread and Nintendo continuing to kind of promote the two together as only being a good thing for the Metroid franchise and for the release of Metroid Dread, the potential sales for Metroid Dread, which most of us already expect Dread to become the biggest and best-selling Metroid game ever, partly because of the popularity of the Switch and also because the Metroid franchise fan base and because the game itself just looks so good. But I also think that there's a case to be made that maybe there's a little bit more nuance to the idea. I mean, even I probably overall see it as a good thing that they're launching together and that Nintendo is highlighting them together. Very likely it's gonna push even more strong sales towards Metroid Dread than even the game itself was already gonna generate for itself. But I also think that we're looking at a situation where on October 8th, a lot of people who are interested in both products or even interested but also kind of on the fence of either product might be faced with a buying decision between the two. And is there a chance that more people than we would like are gonna choose purchasing the Switch OLED over purchasing Metroid Dread. And I think that that's the real conundrum I find us faced with. And when I say us, I guess I mean Metroid fans, right? Who are very invested in Metroid Dread, both as a game and in the sales success of the game for the franchise. Um, I've started to realize, you know, not everyone in the world is gonna go out and plunk down $410, probably 430 or so, when you total the two together to purchase a Switch OLED and Metroid Dread together. And I definitely expect the Switch OLED to be a huge hit. Like I know it's controversial and a lot of people are down on it or they're disappointed by it or it's not the Switch Pro they wanted or whatever and so they're mad about it. But we know how these controversies always go. Yeah, the vocal minority complains about it, but by the time it comes for people to open up their wallets, they do it. Just look at Pokemon controversies, just look at the Zelda Skyward Sword controversy, 
and I think it's the same thing with the Switch OLED. So, come October 8th, the world is going to be buying Switch OLEDs like crazy. I also think the world will be buying Metroid Dread like crazy, so again, I expect a great release and a great return to form for the Metroid franchise because of this game. But not everyone, like I said, is going to be plunking down $400 to $450 for both. I think that there are a lot of people out there, and this is where I would also like to hear from you guys in the comments about your plans or your desires. I think that there are a lot of people that are going to be going to stores or getting online to Amazon and Walmart or whatever to buy these things who maybe would like both a Switch OLED and Metroid Dread, but maybe, you know, can't afford both because, again, that's a lot of money for a lot of people. And so maybe some people will say, gosh, I really want Metroid Dread, but I want the Switch OLED and that's the one I'm going to choose today. And so maybe I come back to Metroid Dread, maybe I don't. But I'm going to choose the Switch OLED over the Metroid Dread purchase. I do think a healthy amount of people who are split between the two will choose the Switch OLED over Metroid Dread. Will that have a significant sales impact? Obviously, none of us really know. But the purpose of this conversation, the kind of thesis statement of this video, I think was more myself acknowledging and sharing with you guys the fact that we need to kind of just be aware that some people might choose the Switch hardware over the Metroid game. Of course, I want to remind you of something that I did also just briefly mention here, which is that there will also be people split between the two who are going to choose Metroid over the Switch OLED. So there's a great chance that this balances itself out, and maybe even this whole concern over the Switch OLED hurting the sales of Metroid Dread is all for nothing, and it's a moot point. I mean, that's entirely possible. That's the purpose of this conversation, is to just discuss the ideas. Again, I myself as a Metroid fan like to think that overall there will be more health Helping from the Switch OLED than hurting from the Switch OLED in favor of Metroid Dread. I really do feel we're only going to see this game be a massive hit. But man, what if the number of people who choose only a Switch OLED over a purchase of Metroid Dread as well is higher than we're thinking? What if it turns out to make a more significant impact than many of us believe? That's where it'll be interesting to see, and I think that obviously... You know, over the course of that first weekend, we're going to start seeing articles and tweets about the initial sales numbers and projections for Metroid Dread and for Switch OLED units. We're going to see, oh, Switch OLED ships 5.5 million units in the first weekend or whatever. And we're going to see Metroid Dread ships 1.7 million units or whatever. Or sales, sells 1.5 million or whatever those numbers are. I'm literally just pulling numbers out of my head here, of course, but... We're going to see that stuff start to get out there, of course, over the first weekend and the first week of both of these products releasing. And so that'll let us know if any of this worry is founded or not. And I mean, I'm acknowledging here several minutes into this video, there's a great chance that none of this means anything. But we're only three months out from these things. We don't know the answers. So this is the time period where it makes sense to speculate and to wonder and to discuss all the possible outcomes. Sure, by the time December rolls around and the release and the sales is behind us and we all know the facts, it could be easy to look back at a conversation like this and say, well, that was stupid because you know the outcome. But right now, where it's the middle of July and we don't know the answers, this is the time it makes sense to speculate and have these conversations because we don't know how it's going to play out. All I can do is remind you of what my personal prediction here is, and my prediction is that the Switch will pro- or the Switch OLED, I should say, will probably help Metroid Dread more than it will hurt it. I think great and amazing sales success is coming Metroid's way in the release of Metroid Dread, but I'm open to see what happens, man, and to see if the Switch OLED effect might actually do a smidge more damage to Metroid's initial sales than helping. I don't expect it, but it is possible, and that's the purpose of a discussion and a video like this. And so, really, I kind of think there's not too much else to say about it right now, man. I mean, this is what it is. It's definitely exciting to know these two products are coming, and I say that as somebody who really doesn't care about the Switch OLED. I mean, maybe I give in to last-minute pressure and decide, oh, I don't want to miss out on it. You know, maybe, like, FOMO sets in, and... Also, we, uh, it's, it's a funny coincidence because uh, my honeymoon happens just like three weeks after these two products launch. So part, and we're going to Hawaii. So we have two very long plane flights, both there and back, right? And we'll be on vacation. We'll have some downtime in the hotel rooms at night. And it's like, 
you know, I'm definitely going to bring my Switch and bring my Metroid Dread to my week-long honeymoon excursion in Hawaii, you know, three weeks after they launch. Is that a reason for me to actually maybe want the Switch OLED? Because even though I never play my Switch portably now, I happen to have a very long vacation week coming right afterwards, and so maybe that's the reason I, I also give in to buying a Switch OLED, but... You know, I do want to remind you guys what I've said on in my initial two videos about the Switch OLED. It's not actually a product I care about. I don't play my Switch portably very often, if at all. You know, minus a week-long vacation to Hawaii after it launches. And so, yeah, I don't really care about the Switch OLED, but it is still exciting that it's coming. It is exciting it's releasing the same day as Metroid, the first Metroid game in so long. The first sequel Metroid game in 19 years. And Nintendo does seem to like the idea of promoting them together, so we're seeing a lot of positive here. And, you know, at this point to end the video, it's just going to be exciting to see how it all plays out. And I'm excited to see how both of these products launch alongside of themselves. It's going to be very curious to see what happens. So, what do you guys think, you know, the concept of, it, of if the Switch OLED could help or hurt the sales of Metroid Dread? Do you agree with me that it'll probably do more help, or do you see some potential damage it could do? Whatever you think about it, talk about it below. And with that, this video is a wrap. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of Rule of Two Review, and I'll catch you next time on another video.